Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RegameCenter.com video, we're going to be tackling three new stories which are doing the rounds, as usual, over the past 24 or so hours. Uh, there's a bit of background noise, unfortunately, because it is really hot here in the UK, so I have to have a few windows open just to crack, because otherwise I might die of suffocation, but I'll do my best, as usual, to remove any excess noise in post-production. So the first story is more of a PSA, and that is Intel fixing the hyper-threading bug plaguing KB and Skylake processors. Then we're going to move over to AMD's market share, specifically of the Ryzen um, processors, drastically improving the company's position in the marketplace. And then we're going to finalize with the RX Vega cards, where we're going to discuss performance again some quotes from AMD and their partners, and then also some release date information. But first things first, a PSA, more than actually um, news, I suppose, and that is Intel. They are completely now aware of the hyper-threading bug in KB Lake and Skylake, and apparently the issue has been addressed with a fix which started rolling out in April 2017. So basically, they are suggesting that you make sure your bias is up to date but reiterated the probability of you actually encountering this issue is rather low, as according to them, it requires a complex number of concurrent microarchitectural conditions to reproduce, end quote. So basically, go to your respective vendor's motherboard's website, check to see if they've released a BIOS to fix this. If not, just keep an eye on it. Do remember, although this was originally reported as a post on Debian.org, it does plague other operating systems as well. So not just other Linux OSs, but you could perhaps have any version of Windows, whether that Windows 10, 7, and so on, and this issue will still be present. Now we're gonna to switch to AMD. It has taken 10.4% of the CPU share from Intel in the second quarter of 17, uh, 2017. Now, this is actually pretty damn substantial, I believe, Unless someone can correct me, this is about the largest single gain in one quarter that AMD have ever had in market share. Now, this data is courtesy of Passmark and their quarterly market share report. So, there are a couple of caveats here. First of all, it doesn't necessarily mean all CPUs sold. So, for example, if you have 10,000 Intel CPUs sold, 3,000 AMD CPUs sold, but... 1500 AMD CPUs are being used, but only 1000 Intel CPUs are being used. AMD will come out ahead of this because ultimately this is a database which is being used by user users who are actually submitting results. The second thing is that if you use any other operating system other than Windows, this whole passmark result does not take into consideration you. But still, even if you take those considerations into account, and you should, that's still very impressive. To put this into some level of context, in the last quarter of 2016, AMD had just around 18%. Now it's hitting around the 30% in the second quarter. That's substantial. It's not quite double, but it's not far off. And do remember that since this is not including games consoles as well, AMD would AMD are doing pretty well for themselves. Another thought for consideration. You have Threadripper entering the mix as well as Basin Falls from uh, Intel. So obviously that will shake things up a little bit. But I think that, if anything, this might be a positive for AMD. I don't mean this in a performance standpoint. I mean in terms of raw affordability. It looks like Threadripper is going to be more affordable. Therefore, because of that, it's possible anyway that AMD might come out ahead with these options. And in the business sector, although obviously this won't probably make too much of a difference with Passmark, but in the business sector, you also have Ryzen Pro, which is going to remain pretty popular, I think, with some individuals in the business sector, but also it might gain somewhat of a foothold for maybe enthusiasts as well. I say this on the basis that AMD are telling us that it has better quality silicon, it's better binned. Now, whether that actually means anything in reality, I don't know. However, in theory, you could possibly take this as context that the CPU might overclock better or perhaps do so with lower volts. So 
perhaps we'll see 4 gigahertz at slightly lower voltages or maybe slightly higher clock speeds as an average but obviously we're only going to have to um, wait for a bit longer before the CPUs go on sale and then we can actually have real results to kind of know whether that's true or not. And I'd like to thank Joe for sending over that particular news tip. Now we're going to move over to RX Vega. There is so much to talk about with Vega at the moment. And now some reviewers are getting hold of samples by purchasing them. Just to clarify, we are starting to get a better picture of the card, at least on the Frontier Edition, the new Frontier Edition. But I just want to talk a little bit about RX Vega and a few other details concerning Vega. So, AMD's own official... A Twitter account, which is at Radeon, has confirmed that they will be announcing RX Vega at this year's SIGGRAPH, which is pretty awesome. However, there was another very interesting tweet from Jason Envigello, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, we made a promise to launch RX Vega during SIGGRAPH. In fact, our CEO made that promise. We're going to keep it. And then he responds to another user and he says and I quote I think it's premature to worry about products gaming's performance by judging a different product not in capital letters optimized for gaming end quote rather interesting the same individual who hinted at Vega's power requirements who is an MSI representative known as the source who can be found on the tweakers forums said please don't compare this card too much with RX Vega Another website actually managed to grab hold of the Frontier Edition of Vega. Uh, they are Gamer Nexus, and I have actually placed their link in the video description. I'm going to quickly go over a couple of their results, just for your FYI. So, Fire Strike Extreme, for example, gets 9,715 on the FE, whereas the GTX 1080 gets somewhere around the 10,000 mark. So, once again, these results correlate with others, which say that the uh, current FE is putting out around the same performance as an in-between 1070 and 1080. So I guess you could call it a 1075, if you will. Then if we were to go down to Doom, which is using Vulcan, so if anything, that should slightly favor AMD. Much the same story. It's just a touch behind the 1080 reference design. Much, much behind the 1080 tie, of course. And then finally... I'll go through one of their other f results, and that is uh, Sniper Elite, which is receiving around 53 frames a second with the Vega FE, whereas on the other hand, the 1080 hits 60, or the 1070 reference design is hitting 47. So what this tells us is that the early results by reviewers uh, who have managed to get hold of the card paints the story that the card is not able to keep up, at least in the current driver state or the current state of the Frontier Edition with the 1080 in the vast majority of the games. Now, that said, the comments from AMD, I'm still going to hold out that it's better to wait for us to see what the RX Vega can do before we say that Vega is a disappointment or anything like that. To me, it's like, first of all, the drivers are really buggy and B... Uh, RX Vega is not out yet and it is the version which specifically was being targeted towards the games. I do wish that AMD would be more forthcoming to tell us what those differences are other than obviously improved drivers. And we were talking just a day or two ago about the rasterization at the moment on AMD's cards. Basically, in terms of culling, it is not being very efficient. And so sometimes what you're getting is certainly objects which are being rendered basically when there is no need to do so. They're being blocked by other objects or just being drawn off screen. In fact, to Gamers Nexus credit, they actually said much the same thing. They said that they are having problems with the drivers. There's some kinks to work out in them. Watman is actually being quite buggy at the moment. Overclocking is pretty broken. Fan control and speed is delayed slash buggy. And occasionally they get colored screen hangs, which isn't exactly ideal. And on dish, in addition to that, they did say that the card gets rather hot and that the reference blower design is, well, it's a blower. Let's just be honest. They're never exactly the best thing ever, are they? And this is actually a similar criticism that you could levy at AMD for like the RX 480s, for example, which were pretty hot and noisy when they were launched. And then once they became 
uh, in the hands of AIBs and they started to kind of customize the designs, they definitely improved things a little bit. So overall, my personal feelings so far on Vega, and I might change my mind tomorrow based upon you know more results and stuff, but it remains pretty much identical to what I've said over the last couple of days. One, I think the Frontier, is, Frontier Edition may be launched a bit too soon. I think that they should have gotten the drivers sorted out and I think they should have improved the message a bit. Honestly, I don't even think they should have called it Vega uh, Frontier Edition. I think they should have called it like I don't know, like the Pro Vega or something like that and just kept the name to even distance the fact of gaming from people's minds in Vega quite as far as, far as possible. Second, I don't think RX Vega is going to suddenly drastically change performance. I was getting a bit suspicious with Vega when they weren't kind of being as boastful as what they were initially, but maybe i don't think it's going to beat the gtx 1080 tire let's let's just put it that way i wouldn't be surprised however if it does beat the 1080 once all of the driver kinks have been resolved and we have rx vega in the hands personally i wouldn't be surprised if we hit, have performance between the 1080 and the 1080 tie i don't think it's quite going to pip the tie to the punch maybe i'm going to be wrong and hey if i am then i'll be very happy the last question of course we have and this is not even resulting in things such as the the drivers which are clearly buggy or the fact that we've got questions uh, questions excuse me about the rendering methodology of the graphics card which we discussed a few days ago but there's a, a more inherent question what price is vega going to ship at for the gamer gaming variants like the rx vega now clearly they can't charge the same price, at least if they hope to be successful of the GTX 1080 tie. They just can't do that. So I think it's probably going to be around between the 1070 and 1080's price. I would say that if it's slightly faster than the 1080, they could maybe price it around the 1080 levels because, you know, that's going to be quite nice for, you know, for folks who already invested into AMD. But there is one saving grace that AMD might be somewhat counting on, and that is mining at the moment is quite profitable. With that said, for a lot of folks who are mining, they might not necessarily want to jump onto RX Vega. I mean, it, I guess it depends because the 500 series cards are also pretty expensive, but I, I guess it depends upon the hash rate of the... Uh, of RX Vega versus what they could get for like let's say two 570s or a, fi a two, couple of 580s or maybe even you know Ninja a 480 off of their friend who's upgrading to like a 1070 or whatever you get the idea so I, I think right now the best thing I can suggest to any viewers because I'm still getting a few folks messaging me asking should I should they jump onto Vega wait for Vega put their pre-order down because let's face it it's probably going to be limited quantities and that's one reason people are thinking of pre-ordering the cards so there is that you know to consider personally i'd say this if the cards are a decent price and you're already invested in amd's ecosystem you're not really looking to jump onto you know from a, a decent free sync monitor you're pretty happy to just say okay for the first month or two the probably the drivers are going to be a bit crappy but they're going to get better. If you're that individual, then pre-order if you desire. But for everyone else, I'd suggest you wait. That's just my personal opinion. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.